Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. First of all, Happy New Year. All of us at LA Wave Options wish all of you a healthy and prosperous 2022. Well, did we get the Santa Claus rally in the markets? Kinda. We'll talk a little bit more about that. In the last recording, interest rates were in a consolidating triangle. They've broken a little bit to the upside. What does that mean for the markets? Let's take a look at the charts. At the time of this recording, it is late on Saturday evening, New Year's Day, so the futures market is currently closed. In the intro, I posed the question, did we get the Santa Claus rally? Well, in our last recording, we had already kind of started this move to the upside, a pretty vertical move, and that continued in the beginning of the week, and as you can see, just kind of tailed off with the markets actually being open for a full trading session on Friday, New Year's Eve. But note that we had some separation from the 10-day moving average, so we were a little bit overbought, so just going sideways a bit, kind of normal, not a whole lot of tax loss selling going on, things like that. So uh, the market, all in all, was pretty quiet and you'd have to say healthy from the way it digested that vertical move to the upside. Can it continue to do that in the beginning of the week? That's going to be the question. First trading day of the month, usually a bullish day because that's when new money goes to work. Investment managers, people putting money in through dollar cost averaging programs, IRAs, 401ks, etc. The money managers put that money to work on the first trading day of the month. So at least at the beginning of the day, perhaps it moves to the upside and then we'll kind of find out. If we open lower, I'm not sure that's a really good sign to start off the year, but we'll wait and see how things open on Monday. If we do move to the upside, we pose this or showed you this uh, zigzag pattern to the upside and note we ran right to that 61.8 percent level strong fib level makes sense to run into resistance there add the 10-day moving average back on everything makes a lot of sense can we hold above this 470 level that we broke if we do and continue to move to the upside the 100 percent extension on that zigzag is pretty close to 500 a nice round number on the spy how long can the market continue to go to the upside with the amount of debt that we're occurring in the United States? I think that's going to be an issue at some point in time. Now, the Federal Reserve has been injecting tons of liquidity. That's put a floor underneath the market, added support. But now as they start taking that away and the market's left on its own, we have to actually start looking at these things called debt. I haven't shown you this in a while, the U.S. debt clock. And you can see over here, our debt is 29, and that's trillion dollars. If you're wondering where it was, it was right about 23 trillion before COVID. So since COVID started, $7 trillion has been added to the national debt. And then you think, well, uh, sounds pretty bad. How do we finance that? Well, if you have a, a GDP, a debt to GDP that's less than one, then you're paying down your debt. So let's take a look at that and see if we can start to make a dent in this. Well, um, no. Currently, the debt to GDP is right there at 133.28% for 2021. And then it's forecast to kind of stay there moving through the next few years. You can see the big jump from 2019 to 2020. Obviously, that's COVID related. But having a debt to GDP above 100 means basically we're living on credit cards. The country I'm talking about as far as our debt. And with the debt to GDP at 133, that means not only are we living on credit cards, we're living on credit cards with high rate. So uh, subprime type of credit cards, above 30%. You've all seen those in the mail before. So at some point in time, you think that the rubber has to hit the road. You know what has to hit the fan. Pick your favorite cliche. I'm curious as to where you think the market goes in 2022. Beginning of the year, what's your forecast? Leave a comment underneath the video as to whether or not you think we move higher or lower for 2022. So I've given you a potential upside target if the market can consolidate these gains above 470 and continue higher. I also said in the intro that interest rates have started to break out. There's a symmetrical triangle that we showed in the last recording. You can see we broke out, came back down to test the breakout. Pretty common stuff when you break out of one of these LA Wave consolidating triangles. Sometimes you break out, come back and test it and continue higher. Sometimes you get a false breakout. Sometimes it just takes off and runs. But at this point in time, we did get an upside breakout, not really a follow through day though, and coming back down to test it. But if interest rates begin to creep back to the upside, again, another fly in the ointment for the market to move higher 
if you will. Let's see what's happening with the dollar. In the last recording, we talked about how the dollar had gone sideways. Well, we're down to test the 50-day moving average now on Friday's close. You can see that right at the low, right at the 50-day moving average, closed just above it. Again, I think the dollar, all in all, is hanging in there pretty well, considering what I just showed you with the debt clock. Taking a look at gold, gold moving to the upside. That's what should happen uh, in this type of environment, and it is. So gold finding a bid. We'll see what happens once we get up into this area here, which should pose as resistance in this 175 area. What happens once we get there? So look at the 10-day moving average here, and you can see tiny bit overbought in gold, nothing too significant, but we do have a bullish cross there. That 10-day moving average is the lime green line. The 30-day moving average is that fuchsia colored line. A lot of traders, a lot of floor traders, look at a 1030 cross as a sign of where the next trend is going to come from. If you get a 10-day uh, moving average crossing above the 30, that's considered a bullish trend. 10 crossing below the 30, considered to be a bearish trend. So at least at this point, it looks like maybe we're going to continue to the upside with gold. Look at oil. I pose the question. We're moving into January now. Is OPEC really going to go through with the cut? I don't know. Oil has moved back to the upside, uh, getting near the area where they said they were going to cut, and that's because we had this big, strong rally in oil. Then we sold off, and as I said, are they really going to do it? Well, now oil's moving back to the upside. I think it's a toss of a coin as far as whether or not they really do it or not. Remember, they kept their last meeting in session, basically meaning that they had the right to change their minds, and so we're not going to have to wait too much longer, I don't think, to find out. Bitcoin, staying pretty solid, uh, has to stay above this 44,000 mark, and so far it has been. It's got that strong wave four right at the 61.8% FIB level, so that's acting as support. We tried to move to the upside, came back down, now we're testing that area again. A break below 44,000, and things change considerably for Bitcoin. The VIX, kind of thought the VIX might drift all the way back down towards the 15 level with this area known as the Santa Claus rally. And by the way, that's the period of time between Christmas and New Year's where normally the market drifts to the upside because nobody's there. There's an old theory, never short a dull market. Well, all the traders are off for vacation, low volume time frame, usually the market drifts higher. That's what the Santa Claus rally, one of the definitions of the Santa Claus rally is. I just think we just got it uh, a little bit early uh, this year and then everybody went home. But uh, we kind of just hung around this area around 17, 18, didn't move down towards that 15 level as you might have thought. So I think that the uh, VIX is leaving a little bit of doubt as to where we can move at the beginning of the year. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video, or better yet, hit subscribe. You'll be notified immediately when one of these videos is posted. And don't forget to sign up for Trade Finder. You can do it right underneath the video here, especially right now, because as I tease in the last recording, if you haven't watched it, go look at it. We're going to be unveiling our new AI-based strategy at the beginning of the year in January, and we'll be talking about it on Trade Finder. It's every Tuesday night. It's free. We talk about the markets, talk about finding trading opportunities, etc. And you're going to want to hear about this. I do think it's the future of technical analysis, forefront, if you will, of where technical analysis is going to be going down the road. And we feel really great about being uh, in the front of it. So you'll want to find out more about that. With that said, again, Happy New Year, everybody. Look forward to a great 2020, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.